I've been doing these what's new in Premiere Pro videos since 2019. Yeah, getting old. But I have to admit, Adobe is listening to its users. While it's probably close to impossible to have a crash-proof editing program that works on every machine on the planet, I think that Premiere Pro is very stable these days. There, I said it. <laughs> and the September 2025 update introduces three areas of change that will actually impact how you edit day to day. One of them makes me especially excited as I will explain at the end. Not to mention that Premiere Pro is coming to iPhone this fall very soon and is supposed to have an Android version later as well and that's something I'm very curious to test, how it collaborates with the desktop version. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to the channel. More than that, the mobile version will be free of charge. Well, kind of at least. You will have to pay to expand storage or for AI generative credits, but that's kind of obvious. If you want to test it on iPhone yourself, I will put the link in the description to the pre-order page. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's break down what's new, why it matters. And the biggest headline for this release is about over 90 brand new transitions, effects and animations. All of them GPU accelerated, very important. Glitches, glows, the kind of things you normally go hunting for in third-party plugins. And you would be very much right, because all of these new additions are possible thanks to the acquisition of Film Impact by Adobe. But I'm happy about it, I think you should be happy about it. That's awesome. We can access all of them in the effects panel or navigate to the window menu and in the extensions you will find Film Impact dashboard. An interactive panel will launch with live previews you can look at before you apply anything to the clips. These are very solid effects. And funny not funny, these effects have the surprise me button. <laughs> Let me explain. The surprise me button randomly changes the values of the parameters within the effect. I can imagine it being useful to brainstorm possibilities. I don't mind that it's there. If it gives you an idea and you will execute it later and you will have a direction later, then yeah, all good. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, right? So overall, approved. And on that list of 90 plus new effects, you can find earthquake, glitch, VHS damage, clothes, blurs, echoes, mosaic, vignettes that warp into any shape, and even the well-known motion twin effect. Okay, the second area of change. For most editors, speed is the major concern. And this update is supposed to make editing feel snappier. One of the factors that will contribute to that is multi-threaded audio conform and pic file generation. Or simply speaking, waveforms will generate faster. And Adobe claims that overall playback is smoother, reducing that annoying lag of hitting play and seeing something actually moving on the screen. And the timeline behavior has been improved as well. Audio waveforms remain visible when dragging a clip or performing common edits, like ripple edit, roll edit, or using a raid stretch tool. Plus keyframes and markers are displayed alongside the waveform while dragging a clip. You can also adjust multiple fades at the same time, which I think they added in 25.4, but I think this version makes it more reliable. And you may say these aren't very flashy new features, but that's actually exactly what we editors have been asking for. Less new stuff, more reliable editing experience. By the way, if you want to speed up your workflow even further, make sure to visit my Gumroad page. You can download the Essential Motion Pack with Pay What You Want model. It's already used by over 100,000 editors worldwide. Crazy to think about. And check out my other packs and Premiere Pro plugins that make editing faster and more enjoyable. Link in the description. And last but not least, we have quality of life improvements. If you go to Preferences, you can now set your default font for captions and text. And whenever you add a new text or caption in Premiere Pro, it will be using that font. And the next one, the next one annoyed me for years. I can't even describe. So you're adding a keyframe to the last frame of the clip, right? And it always jumped to the first frame of the next clip. I hated it, but they finally fixed it. No more, no more jumping to the next clip when I'm still adding keyframes to the prior one. Yes! <laughs> okay, on to the next one. We have new shortcuts for track mute and solo based on track targeting. I mean, could be useful in your workflow. It might be a topic for a future video. We'll see about it. Now for those in the finishing workflows, you can finally import 16-bit PNG files with a better support for metadata across professional formats. You can also use new sequence color tabs to add some visual guidance to your workflow. And I'm a bit confused because we already had those for a few months, but maybe they have changed something in the way it behaves. I don't know, to be honest, but still, it's a useful thing 
thing to quickly navigate between your sequence tabs. Okay, and as I've mentioned, I'm very excited about one of those areas of changes. Guess which one? The first one, of course, the effects, animations. Why? Because it means I will update Ultimate Preset Pack with more effects, with better effects, with better presets. So if that's something you want to get into, now is the time. So head to the Ultimate Presets page and get your copy. Sorry, shameless plug, but people are very much enjoying my preset pack. So I think you will find it useful as well. And let me know in the comments what you think about Premiere Pro these days. Is it playing catch up with other LNLEs or is it actually reliable finally as we always wanted it to be? What do you think? I'm very curious.